All right. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming to our talk today on spending more time coding and less time debugging with the Apex debugger. I know there are a lot of sessions going on, so we want to thank you for coming to ours, especially given the early hour. Our talk today is geared towards developers, and we're going to highlight paid features in the Salesforce ecosystem. So if you're not a developer or you may not be interested in this space, then this may not be the session for you. So with that, let me introduce myself. My name is Javen Aurora, and I'm Salesforce Practice Director at Sline Consulting. At Sline, I'm part of an amazingly talented team of developers, architects, and consultants who specialize in Salesforce implementations and customizations. In addition to that, I'm also a Salesforce MVP and based out of Philadelphia. With me today is Christian. Hey, everyone. I'm Christian. I'm a senior developer at Salient Consulting. I've been working on the platform for the last four years. And before we get started, let's talk about our job as developers. So by show of hands, how many of us here are developers? And how about non-developers? All right. So. Uh, as, as part of being a developer, we get to do a lot of fun stuff, as writing code, learning new technologies and frameworks, and then using that to solve interesting problems. But at the same time, there's a lot of parts of our job that are not so fun, like uh, learning big new code bases, reading through bad code, and then having to, but, but what's worse, it's having to debug that bad code to try and solve some kind of a bug. So today, we'll try to address uh, the debugging aspect of the not so fun part. So we'll introduce uh, a few different debugging tools that are available on the platform. And hopefully with that, you'll be able to make coding fun again. Indeed. Our goal today is to make coding fun again. And to that end, we're going to discuss some different tools on the market. So we're going to talk about Salesforce out-of-the-box debugging tools as well as paid ones on the ecosystem. From there, we're going to do a little bit of a comparison between the tools as it relates to uh, their debugging. And then from there, we're only going to do a demo of the interactive debugger. So with that, let's get started. In the ecosystem, the debugging tools come in three flavors. And don't worry, all of these slides will be posted in the chatter feed after our talk today. The first flavor that uh, debugging tools come in are the Salesforce out-of-the-box uh, tools, which are your debug logs and your dev console. And those are pretty great. The debug logs give you a ton of information about an execution as it runs, but the problem with that is that it gives you a ton of information about an execution, and sometimes it's looking for, it feels like you're looking for a needle on a haystack. So the dev console is a little bit more powerful for that from the debug logs. You can do a little bit of filtering, you can set checkpoints, but those are really good for profiling rather than debugging. So you're close, but not really there to where you need to be to find those bugs. And we want to make coding fun again. So what's left on the market? So they come in two flavors. One are retrospective debuggers, which are debuggers that run after the fact. Now, these debuggers are usually parts of a, an IDE, which offer a full suite of developer tools. And debugging uh, is only one part of it. An in addition, there's also the Apex Interactive Debugger, which allows for real-time debugging to take place. So what do we care about in terms of the feature set for interactive and retrospective debuggers? For one, we can set breakpoints, which will stop the execution of your code. From there, we can step through different statements and executions and look at how your call stack changes. We can see how different variables change as we step through, step over our code. And we can also see how our S objects mutate as well. We can spit all that out into a console with, with more debugging information if needed. So that's kind of the ballpark feature set of, both of the retrospective and interactive debuggers. So let's do a comparison of the two. Right, yeah. So now that we know a bit about the different debuggers, uh, we'll take a look at how the retrospective debuggers and interactive debuggers differ. So as you even mentioned before, there's two main uh, IDs that provide retrospective debuggers, and that's the Welcome Suite and Illuminated Cloud. Uh, so what makes them uh, so one of the key features of the ret retrospective debuggers is that they're able to debug code in production environments as well as sandboxes. Uh, they also work with any asynchronous code, so that's you know batchable classes, schedulables, futures. Um, but they do run into the logging limitations of the debug logs. So that means if your debug log hits the two megabyte limit, you might not necessarily have the ability to step through your code line by line, and instead uh, might have to step. Uh, through method by method call. 
On the other hand, the interactive debugger only works in sandbox environments and cannot debug asynchronous code, so it only works for you know triggers and controllers on pages. Uh, but the main difference is that, that it works in real time, so you can step through your code to your heart's content. Um, one of the other key features is that the interactive debugger, debugger is session based, so at a given time you can only have one active session per sandbox. Uh, while on the retrospective debugger, you can you know, debug as much as you want. And lastly, there's a cost, cost, a cost associated with each of these, although the interactive debugger is much more expensive in comparison. Uh, so some of the other limitations of the interactive debugger, like I mentioned before, is the number of active licenses. So in the example there, you can see that we have one license available in our org, so that means that we're able to debug in one sandbox at a time. If we were to purchase additional um, debug logs, then we could have two active debug sessions, but those sessions would have to be in different sandbox orgs. So another thing is that uh, the interactive debugger is only available in enterprise editions and above, although with the unlimited and performance editions, you do get one license out of the box. As I mentioned before, you're not able to debug any of the synchronous code, such as batchables, future schedules, cubables. And lastly, any metadata, metadata changes that you perform during your debugging will essentially terminate your session, so you'll have to keep restarting it as you're making changes to the code. And with that, we're going to hand it off to Javen to do a quick demo. Thanks, Christian. So we talked a little bit about the features and limitations of the interactive debugger. Let's see it in action in a case uh, with a Visual Force controller. So suppose that as a developer, we built out a page which shows a list of all of our accounts. And on these accounts, we see a different uh, bunch of attributes, including their rating field, which is either hot, cold, or warm. And we give the, the users the ability to hide their cold accounts. Now, this is working for 99% of the time. However, a user calls us and tells us, hey, for some reason, I can still see my cold accounts. And we as developers need to figure out why. So here's what the user would see on the screen. They'd see at the top of it a button to, excuse me, a checkbox to hide their cold accounts. And then they'd see a list of their accounts. We're going to call your attention to the Butterfly Beauty Supplies and Flea LLC, which are in that red box. When the user clicks a checkbox at the top of the page, most of the cold accounts disappear except for the Flea LLC. So we're going to use the debugger to find out why. Now, we think that we know where this problem is happening since the method that's connected to that checkbox is this method, remove cold accounts, but we don't know exactly why this method is throwing an error. So let's take a look at this method. I want to call your attention to line 45, which is iterating through the list, line 47, which is looking for cold accounts, and then line 48, which removes a cold account from the list, and then it continues to iterate forward. From here, we're going to now initiate our debugging session. After we set the breakpoint on the previous page, we're going to go to our interactive debugger in our force.com IDE. We're going to start a session. From there, we're going to go back to our Visual Force page, and we're going to click that checkbox. Clicking that checkbox will initiate that method, or excuse me, will execute that method, and then it'll, the execution will stop at that breakpoint. Once we get to that breakpoint, we can step through the code. We can see how the call stack changes as we step through the code and step over it. So as Javen mentioned, stepping through the code uh, will allow you to see the call stack. So in here on top, you can see that selecting the checkbox called the get account table method, which then called the remove called accounts method. And then below, you're able to see the context of all the variables at a given time. So this is our first iteration. So we can see that the i variable is 0. We, can al we also have a reference to a, which is, an, which is the element at that index. So this, in this case, this is an account. And you're able to see all the fields of that account. And we can also see a reference to this, which is a custom type. And in this case, it's our uh, controller on the page. Um, so this is a little simulation of how the debugger would work. So we essentially have the list of accounts. We have you know a, which is an instance of the account and i, which is our index during the iteration. So uh, at first, our index is 0. And at that index, we have a hot account. So our code will essentially skip the call check, because this is not called. 
and move on to the next iteration. At this point, though, we do have a called account, so our code will end up removing it. And when it does, all the remaining elements get shifted by one. But at this point, we're at the end of the iteration one, so when we move to the next iteration, we've essentially skipped over the called account, and that's why it remains in the list. So an easy way to fix it is to essentially decrement the index every time that we remove an element, so that way we don't skip over any consecutive uh, called accounts. OK, thanks for explaining that, Christian. So what did we see today? Well, we looked a little bit about debugging in general and the different options on the platform. We talked about the free out-of-the-box ones, and we highlighted some features in Illuminated Cloud and Welkins. Now, again, those two suites of project products offer a full set of debugging tools, not just debugging, uh, not just in the debugging space, but they offer a whole bunch of stuff that you should look into as a developer. And they're somewhere on the floor here today. In addition, we also looked into the interactive debugger. The interactive debugger has a lot of things that we like about it. For one, it runs in real time. And well, it really runs in real time, which we really, really like. On the Welkins and the Illuminated Cloud side of things, we like those because they run in, uh, they run in production, and they also run for asynchronous code. We also talked a little bit about the features and limitations of each tool. And most important, we think that we've given enough tools to make coding fun again. So with that, we're going to leave you with a couple of resources on getting started. One of the things that we skipped over is how to set up the debugger, how to set up the force.com IDE. Those aren't trivial steps, but we didn't want to necessarily go into those today in the interest of time. And we're going to go ahead and post all of these in the chatter feed after our talk as soon as we finish up. Additionally, we also have some stuff around APEC, advanced Apex debugging tips on the platform and things that you should look into for your best practices. So. Uh, very briefly, the company that we both work for is called Salon Consulting, where we specialize in Apex, Visual Force, and integrations. We like solving hard problems. So if you like solving hard problems and if you're looking to join a new company, we'd love to talk to you. And if you're looking for help solving your, your hard problems, well, we'd still love to talk to you as well. So with that, we've got a few minutes for questions. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Luke. That's a good question. So the question is that there's uh, a new player to the debugging market, which is free, called VS Tool. We haven't looked into it yet to see how it compares to Welkin's Illuminated or um, the interactive debugger. Do you know if that works in Sandbox or production? Uh, I believe it works in both Sandbox and production. That you can, uh, well, I don't know about the debugging. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, we'll give you a few. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you can switch it. You can only have one active session in an environment going on at one time. Yeah, so if you have multiple developers you know, trying to debug at the same time, one will get an exception because you know, the other is using the one license. So with everything with Salesforce, you want to talk to your AE. Um, we've seen it anywhere from about 1200 to about $1,800 a month. But again, talk to your AE on that. Uh, depending on what type of Salesforce org you have, though, and what type of licensing you have, it may already be included. OK. Well, thank you for coming to our talk today. We'll everyone go and get some coffee and enjoy the rest of your Dreamforce. <laughs>